Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Mass Oteric and our continuing series on the Steam Deck, more importantly getting some awesome emulators running via Emu Deck so you can play some retro gaming consoles on the go. And today we're doing original Xbox emulation via XEMU. I don't know if there's a pronunciation for it, but we're going to call it EMU because it just seems fun. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor down below, hit like and subscribe, that notification bell definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But I will say original Xbox emulation on the Steam Deck is absolutely incredible, both in dock mode and on the go. But it is one of the more complex emulators to get set up, so make sure you follow along with all of the steps closely. That's because in the GitHub setup, there is a little bit of a clerical error. They forgot to tell you you need one file, and I will explain that to you. But you'll see here under Xbox in a folder anywhere you want on your desktop, I have something called core files. And you're going to see complex.bin, the mcxp 1.0.bin, and a hard drive image. These are the three files that I'm showing you right now. And if we go over to the MU Deck setup under GitHub, this is going to be the repository for all the information of what emulators work with MU Deck and what you need to set them up. And the interesting thing is, at least for Xbox emulation, they missed one file. You'll see here, System Emulator ROMs Format and Required Files in the Base of the Emulation or Special Considerations. For Xbox, you're going to see those files. We'll get to them in a second. But pay attention to the file format. Whatever games you own that you want to make disk images for, they need to be in XISO or XISO formatted for it to run on XCMU. And you'll see here are the other files in either MCPX underscore 1.0.bin, the modified complex retail BIOS, and the hard drive image. But here's the thing about the file it's asking for complex. It needs to be complex underscore 4627v1.03.bin. That's the full file name and it needs to go over to your installation. And you do need to get that from an original Xbox. You'll see here that you just make a separate folder. This is just me on the SD card that I'm moving over and I copy the game. Since they are large, it will take a little bit of time. And don't forget that my tutorials are predicated on using a dock with either a USB thumb drive, a hard drive, or a micro SD card and a USB adapter. And honestly, you're going to probably be playing this on your TV as much as you are on the go as well. So I definitely recommend a dock. I will leave a link in the description below for this one. It's not an affiliate link and I make no money. It is just there to be helpful. And now that we have all the files that we need, including the one that's not mentioned in GitHub, we're going to go ahead and mount and open that removable storage. And you'll see that we have the first three files here. Two of them go to one spot and one goes to another, so pay close attention. We're going to copy over the two files that we have right now, and we're going to go over to primary, and we're going to go underneath emulation, wherever you installed emudeck to. These two files here, including the additional BIOS file, which I'll show you in just a moment, go to the root directory of the BIOS folder. They are not nested in any individual folder. You need to put them in BIOS, but underneath nothing else. You'll see some emulators do have BIOS folders. This does not work that way. And now that we have those two over, we're going to move the complex underscore v1.03.bin over to the same folder that we just moved those other two BIOS files. I did it in two steps to see if it would work the way they asked it to, and it did not. So just make sure that all three of those files go underneath BIOS. Now, if we go back to the emulation folder, you're going to see a storage folder. And this is where that virtual hard drive image for XEMU is going to go there is going to be a folder right here for it. And by default, when it installs, there is a file that matches that in here. It is a five megabyte image. The image that I use is like 600 megabytes and it is much larger. So I do recommend maybe you switch that out. But if you do copy and paste it over with a duplicate file name, the Steam Deck OS is going to give you a warning and it's gonna ask if you want to overwrite the file. That's perfectly fine or you can leave the one that's in there. It is quite small. Fine for saving games, no big deal, whatever you want to do. Here I just hit overwrite. From there, we're going to go into ROMs. This is where you're going to put the disk images from your games that you own into the appropriate folder, obviously being alphabetized. Xbox is going to be exactly where it needs to go. So just go ahead, double click, and copy whatever games you want in here. Just be aware that it's going to take a minute, so go ahead, have a drink, have a snack, whatever works for you. 
When you have all the games you want in that folder, we're going to reopen Emudeck and we're going to come down to Tools and Stuff. Now I know we added BIOS files for the original Xbox, but be aware that the BIOS checker for some reason does not look for them whatsoever. You're not going to know whether or not they're correct until you actually try to run XEMU, and that is when you're going to find out if you've done things correctly to this tutorial. Follow along and you will be fine. Go ahead and open up Steam ROM Manager, read the warning about how it changes the controls, and as usual, all the parsers will be turned on unless you've toggled any of them off. Go ahead and hit Preview, Generate App List, and then from the Filter by Category, at least for me because I've got a lot of stuff on this installation, you will see the Xboxes right here. It's not alphabetized, just be aware, don't go all the way to the bottom like I did. Xbox is actually close to the top. I added one game on and I transferred everything else in the background just so I wouldn't have to waste capture space. And you'll see here Sneak King, obviously the best game on the Xbox, is available. We hit Save App List, so that'll move it into our library. And then from there, we can just 100% close out of everything we are doing. So go ahead and just close Emudeck and return to gaming mode. Now, word of advice, before you transfer the files over to your Steam Deck, I highly recommend you test them on XEMU and Windows because some of these files are three to four gigabytes when you rip your disks and you don't want to spend all that time transferring files around if you didn't test them first it'll save you a lot of time if you make a mistake but now that we have at least sneak king moved over in this video and there's a bunch of other games i'm going to show that i transferred at a different stage once you've loaded up you're going to see steam virtual gamepad is connected and now we can just play a game that we picked from the menu you can put in discs from the actual menu itself in xcmu but honestly just going through the steam library is an easier and prettier experience but when you get steam deck running the xbox everything just works Everything is smooth, everything is fluid, playing Half-Life 2 here other than the AI getting in my way. This look and feels like the original Half-Life 2 I played on Xbox. I played it on PC as well, I've played it like a dozen times. But it is just 100% working here, and right now I am at a 4x internal resolution scale. And in about a minute I'll go over all of the options, but do be aware that depending on the game you might want to raise or lower the internal resolution scale if you see any hitching. But one game I've played a ton of that I absolutely wanted to test is Jet Set Radio Future, and it is perfect on the Steam Deck here. All of the controls transpose over to the Steam Deck perfectly because the Steam Deck basically uses an Xbox setup for its controller. The graphics look amazing, the sound is exactly how I would expect it to be. Everything is just looking and playing like this game should, including this really awesome dog that I always love visiting there. Every once in a while you might see a little bit of a graphical glitch and that is just in XEMU. It is not a completed emulator, it's still a work in progress. So if you see glitches on your Steam Deck, it's probably gonna be replicated on any instance of XEMU that is running. But honestly here, it does work, it's fluid, it's fast, and it's an amazing game. But let's talk about the best game on the Xbox, Sneak King. It is not, I was using this for a different video and I thought it would be useful. If you go ahead and hit both start and select at the same time, it's not gonna quit out of the game like most emulators, it's gonna open up the XEMU menu. You'll see here in settings, you're gonna have simple things like volume, a full screen toggle, don't know why you'd wanna untoggle that in handheld mode, and some basic video settings. This is just what's gonna be in the quick menu, but from there, we're going to have a deeper menu as well. You can play around with scaling. I just leave everything original Xbox as 4x3 because that's how I remember it. But if you go into all settings, this is where you're going to get some more options. But interestingly, for as complex of an emulator as this is, emulating original Xbox, the options are limited, but we have just what we need. As far as general is concerned, just leave it as is. Audio is leave it as is. Network, if you want to actually network this up to something like a virtual Xbox Live, you can. And system, just leave it as is. This is going to come basically almost perfectly pre-configured. But the one menu we want to go into is display. And for some reason, I could not toggle over to the right until I push the left thumbstick in once. It's a very weird situation. So if you find yourself struggling to get over here, just push in the left thumbstick and then hit right. We just changed the internal resolution scale from 1x to 4x, and by default, the first time you load up a game on XEMU, it's going to be at that 1x internal resolution, and everything is running smoothly. But if we go in and do something stupid like turn it to 8x, you will see what happens very quickly. But as far as the rest of the display options are concerned, you really don't need to worry about any of those, including window size, unless you're dealing with a dock. But if we move up to 8x and then we go back into the game, this is in real time, it didn't freeze when you change the internal resolution scaling. It is just probably recomposed 
profiling in the background so give it a few seconds and you will now see that sneak king turns into slideshow king 8x is just too much for the steam deck in almost every single instance but do play around with the internal resolution scale because some games are going to get you two some games are going to get you four it really is a game by game basis but now that we're back to four it just runs smoothly and i will say that this core has excellent audio as well so go ahead and listen to the intro to halo for like 45 seconds and i'll come back and close out the video but enjoy But I've isolated approach signatures for multiple CCS class battle groups, make it three capital ships per group. And in about 90 seconds, they'll be all over us. Yeah, it just looks and sounds and plays exactly like we'd expect an original Xbox to look, sound, and play. But with that internal resolution scaling, it is just a lot better. We're at 4x right here, and at least in the intro stages to the original Halo, it works perfectly fine. And that's the thing. Pretty much everything you throw at XDMU is going to work. There are a few edge cases of games that don't run on the emulator yet, but that is because it is still a work in progress. But honestly, I used to be a lot better amped. I think I forgot how to play this game because it's probably been 15 years. But there's a ton of stuff to play on the original Xbox. And just make sure you don't fall down like I do. And weird fact, I have been at that resort. I've been at every single resort in every single amped game for work. But honestly, original Xbox emulation on the Steam Deck is awesome. And if you follow this tutorial, you'll be playing it too. Just be aware that there's a couple more files you need to move around. And if you get stuck, leave me a comment or join my Discord. And we have people that are happy to help you. Short of that, let me know what system you want to see next. But this video is over. Go play some Xbox and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.